in Benson. That's chapter two we started uh, previously. And I'd like to once again go through that. Invention that is a pre writing activity. We are not actually writing. We are not uh, put thoroughly writing without collecting strategies and writing tools with the objective of storing, imparting certain or necessary writing strategies and steps. In the book uh, patterns for college writing that has designated some of the procedures for the students and researcher. Here, invention is a pre-writing activity and pre-writing endeavor, which encourages the writer to discover the most entertaining subject matter. And this most entertaining subject matter can be developed into masterpiece of an essay in the latter part. This helps writer to think about what he or she is going to say about this assignment. Suppose you are present presented assignment, you are presented project work to be completed within certain period of time, and you are not directly drafting your project work. You are thinking about some of the pre-writing activities, and invention is one of them. This helps, this gives impetus, a set of course to the uh, people, to the writer, to, uh, to think about uh, what he or she wants to say. Similarly, uh, if the writer consumes much time on invention in the beginning days, later on he feels comfortable. What is the reason behind that? He feels comfortable later on because uh, he gets or he has uh, collected a lot of materials to write. And he doesn't have to seek the materials because he has already stored the material and his writing journey starts there. His draft starts there. It includes reading the given assignment carefully. Okay, this invention to think about the subject matter, general subject matter, specific topic, moving from general subject matter to topic or determining the length understanding the assignment, understanding the thesis, developing the thesis, implying the thesis. So many subtitles we are discussing. They all come under inventions. OK, uh, for that, all right, or writers should read the assignment carefully. Until and unless read the assignment carefully, uh, that person is not supposed to think about thesis statement, general statement, general subject matter, specified topic, limiting the lens, developing the thesis, implying the thesis. Okay. For all those things, one has to read the text first. That's why until and unless you read the text, you never begin writing. Okay, that's why this invention exercises the, activates the mind of the reader, uh, readers so that they can read the text carefully. Next, uh, invention is an inclusive subject matter. Invention includes a number of things. First of all, understanding the assignment, then setting the limits, moving from subject to topic, finding something to say that is uh, that includes brainstorming and journal writing, grouping the ideas after brainstorming and journal writing. You are uh, grouping the ideas out of clustering and outlining. I think uh, we are going to start from that or not finding something to say, I think. And um, understanding the thesis and understanding the thesis means introduction, body paragraphs and conclusion. Uh, in the post reading period, uh, you start understanding the thesis and you are developing your thesis into introductions, body paragraph and conclusion because uh, thesis introduction is the uh, inclusion of the statement of the thesis body is the elaboration of the thesis and conclusion is the restatement of the thesis okay once again i would like to revise this one why is it why there is connection uh, why is there connection between thesis uh, and the different parts of the essay different parts of the assignment there is connection because introduction is the statement of thesis body is the elaboration or explanation 
or execution of or explanations uh, of thesis and conclusion is the restatement of the thesis. And finally, developing a thesis and our 25 marks will be consumed in the kitchen of patterns for writing. OK. They are not 25 marks. We have other topics also. Uh, one of the sections are 25 marks. The only chapter two will be completed here. Then uh, I think we start. Uh, we went uh, moving from subject to topic. OK. And we also learned uh, how can we understand the assignment? This is a this is a understanding the thesis and setting limit length, purpose, audience, occasion and knowledge. They are the determiners for setting the limit and moving from subject to topic. We can move to uh, subject to topic out of adapting these procedures, probing questions and a free writing. Then we can find something to say out of brainstorming and journal writing. We can group the ideas out of clustering and outlining. And we can understand the thesis uh, through introduction, through body paragraphs and through conclusion. And we can develop the thesis. First of all, we have to define the thesis, then deciding on the thesis, which, which sort of thesis should be applied here. Then you have to state the thesis. Then finally, you are applying the thesis. OK, they uh, will be the subject matter of today, today's class. OK. Can understand the thesis uh, by reading. I told you yesterday that understanding thesis is meant to read uh, the assignment, given assignment uh, carefully first. Uh, this should involve possible subject matter to be included, possible techniques to be applied, and the length of the assignment, target audience, all those things uh, what uh, are included under understanding the assignment. What will be the subject matter, and what are the possible techniques to be applied? What will be the length of your assignment? Who are the target audience? Uh, those things will be included here uh, in the real drafting. That's why you have to first of all read the assignment. You have to first of all read the text given by the university or college. Anyway, the assignments should be read minutely to generate possible ideas to be poured to respond to given assignment. Uh, you do not have any other alternative besides reading the assignment carefully. We have to read the assignment carefully. Study the assignment minutely so that you can think about the possible subject matter. Possible techniques, the length of the assignment and target audience. Now, how can we set the limits of the given assignment? We can set the limits of the given assignment. First of all, uh, considering the length of the assignment, then purpose of writing. Uh, that may be uh, if you are writing job applications, your assignment can be very shorter. And if you are preparing a research proposal, this assignment can be longer. Uh, similarly, the length of the assignment can be determined on the basis of on the ground of purpose of writing. Expressive writing that conveys your personal feeling. Informative writing that informs the reader on something. Persuasive writing but that tries to convince the reader uh, on the point you have rest. OK, and that's why the length of the assignment can be differentiated on the ground of purpose also. Then keeping the audience in mind uh, on the basis of the audience. If your uh, assignment is for grouped audience like classmates or coworkers, if it is for specialized audience or if it is for general or universal audience on the basis of audience also the length of the assignment can be differentiated and another uh, thing another significant element for limiting the assignment is occasion that is the situation occasion refers to the situation which enables the writer to write which situation compels the writer to write that that is the or determiner to determine the length of the assignment then the knowledge uh, I already told you that a person writes uh, much on the familiar subject matter, but he doesn't write much in the uh, what unacquainted or unfamiliar subject matter. And I gave you example that student write um, 
some pages for five marks and your writing will be limited in one page for 15 marks because for five marks they know the uh, they what the subject matter is very clear to them familiar to them but 15 marks the question is not clear to them the subject matter is not clear to them uh, acquainted to them because of that they cannot write much that's why they are the uh, criteria they are the factors which determine the length of the assignment what are the factor considering the length the purpose of writing audience occasion and knowledge then how can we move from a uh, general subject to specified topic and we can move from general subject to specific topic uh, out of uh, two procedures one question for probing probing questions question for clarification where you can ask uh, questions just like what happened when did it happen uh, similarly what uh, where did it happen who did it what does it look like and out of asking a series of questions you can search the topic you can select the topic from there and another procedure for moving from subject to general subject to specific topic is free writing okay this can be understood as free writing technique in the academic environments a person writes continuously without focusing on without much caring about or worrying about the mistakes errors uh, mechanical uh, errors and grammatical conventions uh, similarly a person can indulge in focused free writing and looping uh, this is the process uh, what which continuously focuses on the subject matter all the time you go on with focusing on the subject matter because of that you can be able to find out the topic and this process is called looping or focused free writing okay that's why we can move from general subject to specific uh, topic uh, out of two procedures one questions for probing question for clarification where you are uh, asking questions related to your subject matter to find out the topic and another one free writing uh, this free writing uh, what this can be pre writing technique and what this helps the reader uh, find out the topic uh, out of the continuous focus on the subject matter now how can we find something to say okay you have got assignment and you are blind you are totally blind what to say what to say about the assignments if you are blind if you don't have any idea then we can adopt two methodologies two procedures two techniques to generate something to say about our subject matter one is brainstorming another one is journal writing we can find something to say but out of brainstorming and writing journal after narrowing the subject in a specific topic now you have got topic you have already selected topic out of general subject matter now the task of finding to say and this is to select what this is to uh, select some idea generate some ideas about your subject matter or topic and this includes brainstorming and writing journal one brainstorming what is brainstorming uh, look at the literal term brainstorming bringing storm in the mind shower of ideas in your mind bringing shower of ideas rain of ideas in your mind this is called brainstorming it is the way of discovering ideas on the topic the writer has selected individually or the in a group because there can be individual assignment or group assignment which can be presented to the individual and the group by the university or college it's a brainstorming <clears throat> what uh, this is very beneficial to discover the ideas related to the subject matter she or he discovers records even every facts ideas or detail related to the topics those things get recorded whatever you brainstorm whatever you think about the ideas they can be recorded every facts can be recorded 
every idea can be recorded, details can be recorded, and all those recorded ideas and details they can be transferred later on in a real writing, real draft. This is brainstorming. To brainstorm is to think about and try to come up with ideas or solution to a problem, either on its own or in a group. Because uh, I already told you that the assignment can be presented individually or in a what group or to a person. That's why to brainstorm is to think about and try to come up with series of the ideas related to the uh, subject matter. Even you can find, you can think about the solution to the problem. If he and his workers sit around and try to come up with the new ideas for an campaign or an aid campaign, this is an example of brainstorming ideas. Okay, here you are only thinking. You are thinking about so many ideas related to your subject matter. Okay, only this is brainstorming. Brainstorming is to think a number of ideas about your subject matter, which can be what later developed into thesis, which can be later developed into assignment. Is it clear? Are you clear about brainstorming? Yes, sir. What are the two procedures which can be applied to find something to say? One, brainstorming. Another journal writing. Brainstorming is to think about series of ideas about your subject matter. It's, if it is an assignment, then you are thinking about series of ideas yourself. If it is group assignment, your group group members, your co-workers, you sit around and try to think about a number of ideas. You try to discover new ideas are related to your subject matter. This is what we call brainstorming. Now, journal writing. Journal writing can be understood as one of the strategies for finding something to say at the presence of routinely keeping a journal. Here, don't forget this. You are keeping what a journal routinely. Schedule. You have a, a sort of schedule to per, per, to publish a journal. Here, what you are going to write down in your journal? You are jotting down your own experiences, exploring the ideas. Here, she may want to use when your C writes. That's why journal writing can also be understood as one of the strategies for finding something to say on the basis of exploring the ideas and your own experience, jotting down your own experience. Okay, even you are familiar with the, even you have got idea, you, sorry, you have got assignment and daily, you can think about your assignment. You can, what, you can tell something about your assignment and if you get a new idea about your assignment, then you keep record, you keep a journal. This keeping record in your diary, what routinely, this is what we call journal. Now, so you can keep a record of whatever you discover, whatever the idea you discover in your daily life on the basis of your own experiences. Okay, this is what we call journal writing. Okay, exploring the ideas. Journal writing includes two things. One, you can either discover new ideas and kept in your journal, or you can jot down your own experiences related to the subject matter. That's why oh, these two methodologies are very beneficial to find something to say. Here is further explanation of journal. Journal writing is the process of recording personal insight, reflection, and questions on assigned or personal topic. Okay, you have already got the topic, and you can think about your uh, what topic, and you can have your one personal vision related to this topic. You can have a questions related to this topic. This is what we call. Uh, record of what we, what the vision that comes to you, the record of your reflections, record of the question associated to your subject matter. This is what we call journal writing. Journal projects assigned in class may include horror hits, thoughts about uh, daily experiences, reading assignment, and current events and science experiments. Okay, all those things are recorded and they will be later on used as the materials for real writing.
in the field of accounting and banking this is related to your field related to your faculty in the field of accounting and banking because many students get confused journal entry journal writing because you are regularly using journal entry in your accountancy okay and what is journal entry there in accountancy because nagara sir is teaching you journal entry but here i am uh, talking about journal writing the journal, journal entry is the record of business transactions in the accounting business. book for a business okay i think this is my knowledge to accountancy i'm not totally uh, got acquainted with this journal entry you better know than me okay regarding this anyway it is a record of business transactions but your journal writing is the record of your personal insight and experiences uh, related to the subject matter that is the difference between journal writing and journal entry a properly documented journal entry consists of correct correct debt amounts to be debited and credited description of transaction and unique reference number that is about account uh, journal entry uh, but you can ask uh, detail to your related subject teacher yes this is about journal entry but here journal entry in english in patterns for writing means to enter your personal records your insight your visions your experiences question related to your subject matter all those things you are going to enter into your journal writing that is the difference between journal writing and journal journal writing in accountancy and journal journal writing in english or patterns for writing that's a don't get confused okay here is bird capital bird in writing journal entries can be understood as the inclusion of rights of even when the writers do not have any particular uh, project they have to respond suppose uh, you do not have any task to uh, complete you do not have any assignment even in that situation you write something you what record something you have a vision something and this is what you got journal okay uh, my target my focus here is that your personal experience can also be the subject matter for writing is it your personal experience your daily activities can also be the materials for writing and if you keep record that becomes journal if you do not keep record that becomes your daily experience that's so why your daily experience your daily activities can also be recorded because that can be also used later on that's why you develop the habit of recording your experience what you experience today and what you are going to experience tomorrow that can be recorded because in future this record can be the materials for writing supporting details for writing that's why you are appeal you are requested you are asked to develop the habit of recording your experience in a diary okay that is what you call journal writing are you clear about how can we move from uh what, sorry how can we find something to say out of brainstorming and another one journal writing okay there are the two procedures uh, by which we can find something to say now how can we group ideas now you have selected topic you you have collected ideas to say something now how you are going to uh, collect how you are going to group these ideas you have already uh, collected ideas out of brainstorming or journal writing and you have got idea and these ideas can be now grouped grouped into different groups here uh, brainstorming and writing journal help the writer to collect materials to write okay you have got the materials and these materials now are going to be grouped however 
they need to be grouped and outlined. This starts into clustering and outline. How can we group ideas? We can simply we can group ideas by clustering and outline. Now, what is clustering and what is outline? OK, they are going to be studied in detail. Clustering is a technique of visually arranging the related ideas so that one can easily say at a glance where ideas belong and where not. Here, she needs more information. Where ideas bloom, whether he needs further information or not. Okay, this clustering is a technique of. Don't forget this. Here is the definition of clustering. Clustering is a technique of visually arranging the related ideas so that one can easily say at a glance by looking what where ideas bloom. What are what the related ideas? Where can the ideas be put? And how can ideas be differentiated? For that, clustering is very beneficial to group ideas. Clustering begins with writing the topic in the center of a sheet of paper, which gets surrounded by related words and phrases with the objective of identifying the main points. How are you uh, practicing clustering? We can practice clustering by writing your topic in the center and you are writing uh, related ideas around the topic. Here is an example of clustering. Okay, uh, is it visible? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay, in the center there is gardening. Okay, this is a topic. This is the topic of your assignment. Here is a sample of clustering and this gardening. Okay, what are the various terms, uh, words and phrases related to gardening? Here, fertilizing, here, weeding, here, watering, and how much and when, here, harvesting your plants, here, preparing your garden for winter, here, researching and uh, purchasing plants and seeds, here, preparing the group of ground tilling, do you know tilling? Uh, preparing for plants, preparing for harvesting, clearing this, okay? Uh, all those terms are related to garden. That's why even in a sheet of paper, if you are given assignment, uh, you can write your topic in the center you, and you can uh, cluster this topic. You can cluster this topic. You can surround this topic out of these related terms. Okay, this gardening uh, means that includes uh, what fertilizing. You are using chemical fertilizers there and you are weeding you are removing the unnecessary items from the garden and you are watering. When can uh, you water and how much you water? Then harvesting your plants. If the plants are ready, then you are plucking out the flowers or other fruits. This is harvesting. Here, uh, preparing your garden, preparing your garden for winter. Okay, uh, how you are going to manage your garden in winter and you are researching. Okay, you are going to, uh, to research over the plants uh, related to fruit, what flowers and fruits, uh, then you can purchase the plants and seeds. Uh, you, you can go to nursery and buy uh, flowers and what uh, flower plants and fruits plants. Then you are preparing the ground, uh, tilling and all. Here, don't care about order. Which should come first, which should come second, which should come third, uh, fourth. Okay, don't think about this because you are just colostering. You are just writing related ideas because they can be ordered later on uh, in section uh, uh, chapter three. We'll talk about ordering arrangement. Arrangement, OK, that's why in unit two, you are just uh, uh, thinking about pre writing activities. You are not really writing because this is the preparation to write. This is a journey to write. OK, you can cluster this uh, what topic out of surrounding uh, the topic by related what uh, subject matter, words and phrases. Okay. Is it clear to you? Uh, this is clustering. Are you clear about clustering? Okay, Anjugiri, uh, you tell us about clustering. What is clustering in your one words? Uh, 
which interested anju aren't you listening to me okay ganesham yes sir i can tell okay you can you can tell about color sharing is normally is uh, making groups or it is the techniques of visually arrange the related ideas so the can easily say lens where ideas belong um, and where are not whether he, whether he uh, what he needs for information or not okay how can we begin the clustering we can begin the clustering by what keeping the topic in the center then this topic can be surrounded by related words and phrases is it clear clustering is visually arranging the related ideas and it can be started out of keeping the topic in the center and uh what surrounding this topic uh with related words and phrases now it is a sample of clustering now outlining second one we are grouping the ideas outlining an outline is a tool used to organize written ideas about a topic or a thesis into a logical order outlines arrange or major topics sub topics and supporting details writers use outlines for uh, when writing their papers in order to know which topic to cover in what order okay dear students outlining is a tool that can be used to organize the written ideas about a topic or thesis into a logical order still you have not uh, written it is not a real writing real writing takes place uh, in our drafting you are just in a raw paper you are arranging the ideas one after another you are presupposing the modality of your assignment outlining is the presupposition of the modality of your assignment don't forget that outlining is the imaginative or speculative shape of your assignment how what how does your essay look like okay this is presupposed how does your assignment look like this is presupposed that is the imaginative shape imaginative design of your essay are you clear about outline imaginative shape it is not a real shape because really we are uh, what uh, entering into drafting in this drafting session we are just right here you are not writing because all all the sections of the all the topics sub topics of the invention are all pre writing activities we are here in pre writing activities that's so outlining this is the imaginative shape made by the writer about his assignment or the essay for that writers use outlines when writing the papers okay this can be later used uh, in the real writing papers in order to know which topic to cover in what order this will be very beneficial outline helps the writer uh, to know about the topic and order outline can be both formal and informal in writing essays the writers mostly use informal outline informal outline means they are just imagining the shape of essay and this imaginative shape may be applied or not in real writing i am going to differentiate between formal outline and informal outline in informal outline the writer makes the imaginative shape of the essay or the assignment which may be or may not be what which may be or may not be applied later on this is informal outline but formal outline in formal outline the writer makes the shape imaginative shape but this is going to be really applied in real writing okay informal outline is imaginative shape which may be or may not be applied in the real writing and what formal outline is the 
imaginative shape, speculative shape of the essay, speculative uh, shape of an assignment, which is really going to be applied in the real writing. It means the shape of the outline, what can be the same. This can be what exactly applied in the real writing. This is formal outline. But in writing, uh, the writers make uh, informal outline. This sort of informal outline doesn't include all the major division and subdivision of the paper the way formal outlines do. Formal outline makes the includes all major division and subdivision of the paper because they are going to be really applied later on. But informally, uh, the informal outline doesn't include such uh, division and subdivision. This informal outline presents the possible shape of the essay. I already told you that only possible shape. It may be applied or may not be applied. Okay, that is one of the strategies for grouping ideas. One, clustering. Clustering means this is visually arranging the related ideas uh, so that the writer comes into the conclusion that whether he has to apply, whether he has to uh, add some more information or not. And a clustering begins uh, with writing topic in the center and this topic can be surrounded by the related words and phrases. Then what <clears throat> another one outlining. This is one, another strategy of grouping the ideas. Uh, this is meant to present the possible shape of the essay. Uh, this outline can be formal and informal. In informal outline, especially this is uh, applied. This informal outline is enjoyed by essay writer, essayist. This informal outline doesn't include all the major division and subdivision, but the formal outline includes all the major division and subdivision because uh, this is the imaginative shape, but which is going to be really applied in the uh, real writing. Are you clear about how we can group the idea? Is there any confusion? Um, if, if not, I will go to another topic. Is there any doubt? Please ask me. Do you have any problem? Sir? Yes? So you sum about a formal writing and informal writing. Write a little. Sorry? Formal writing? No, no, we are not talking about here formal and informal writing. Uh, writing uh, can be uh, predominantly formal. If you are writing the assignment, this is predominantly formal. Most of the writings are formal, but uh, here I am talking about outline. Outline can be formal and informal. In informal outline, you are presenting the shape of the essay, which may be or may not be applied later on. In formal outline, you present the shape of the essay with uh, major division and subdivision of the paper, but this is going to be really applied in the real writing. There are two types of outlines, one formal and another informal. But essay writer, essayist, they focus on informal outline. Outline can be formal and informal, but the assignment presented by the university, this is formal writing. Okay. Okay, sir. Can I skip to another topic? How can we understand and support thesis? That is another of the pre writing activities included in invention. How can we understand and support thesis? After grouping the ideas out of clustering and outlining, we have already uh, looked at the order. Yes, we have started this order. From here, look at that. Our order starts from here. Uh, understanding the assignment. After understanding, we can limit the given assignment. The size has been maintained here. Then we can move from subject to topic, general subject to specified topic. Then after we find something to say out of brainstorming and journal writing, then we can group the ideas out of uh, clustering and outlining. Then this is our another journey. You, what we can understand and support the thesis. After grouping the ideas out of clustering and outlining, 
one has to consider the thesis of Nizar Hall as well. Now you are towards the end of your preparation. You are towards the end of your preparation and after uh, full preparations, uh, then you are really starting the writing journey. Our thesis can be understood is the main idea of the essay, its central point. What is the thesis? A thesis can be understood as the main idea of the essay. How we are going to understand the main idea of the essay and supporting idea of the essay. Here, understand and support thesis. Thesis is the central point of the essay. Studying the thesis and developing ideas is a central concern to the college writing. Until and unless you write the include the thesis statement, your writing career cannot be uh, successful. That's why the experienced writer they have to state the thesis and they have to develop their thesis. That's why the assist consists of the says consists of several paragraphs. Introduction. You can understand the thesis here in through introduction. You can understand your thesis through body paragraphs. And you can understand your thesis from your conclusion. What is introduction? What is introduction? It is the presentation of thesis statement. What is body paragraphs? It is the development and support of the thesis statement. What is conclusion? It is the restatement of the thesis. In all cases, we are developing and understanding the thesis. What are you going to write down in introduction? Your introduction is the statement of your thesis statement or presentation of your thesis statement. Your body paragraph is the development and support of your thesis statement. And your conclusion is the restatement of the thesis statement. But it is not the rewriting of introduction. You are not going to rewrite the introduction. Yes, that's why all the, all the parts of the essay they are closely connected with the thesis statement. Here in introduction, you can understand thesis through your introduction. In introduction, you uh, state, you present the thesis. In body paragraph, you develop and support your thesis. In conclusion, you are restating your thesis and uh, you are not rewriting your introduction. Okay, how can we understand uh, thesis? Mimala Rijal. Are you listening to me? Uh, how can yes, we sir. understand? How can we understand thesis? The, the thesis uh, can be understood as the main idea of the essay. Yes. Uh, we need to include in the um, thesis uh, uh, to develop uh, it by uh, experience. Uh, it is uh, related. Uh, yeah. It can be um, consist of several paragraphs, uh, which is re related to the uh, understanding and support of the thesis. Introduction is the presentation of the ideas. Body part uh, uh, is development and supportive part of the thesis. And conclusion is the restatement of the thesis. Thank you. Thank you. We can understand thesis statement. Uh, Throughout the essay, all over the essay, what there is the uh, what we can acknowledgement or introduction to the thesis, because this thesis is introduced, stated in the introductory part. It is elaborated and supported in the body paragraph, and it is restated in the concluding paragraph. That's why in all throughout the essay, throughout the assignment, we are what what we do, what is to understand the thesis. Are you clear about that? We can understand and support the thesis throughout the essay. Going through the essay, okay? In introduction, we are presenting the thesis statement. In body paragraph, we are developing and supporting the thesis. And in conclusion, we are what we are restating the thesis statement. But one, what you you have to be very careful that um, introduction is the statement of the presentation of the thesis. Body is the elaboration of the thesis. And conclusion is not the rewriting of thesis. It is not rewriting, but it is the restatement. Or the restatement of the thesis, but it is not rewriting of the introduction. Uh, 
look at that. We can understand thesis here. Introduction, thesis statement, body paragraph, support for thesis, body two, support for thesis, body three, support for thesis, body four, support for thesis. Conclusion, this is the restatement of thesis. Look at the your modality of essay. Uh, how many paragraphs? One, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. You can have three paragraphs also. You can have four paragraphs, five paragraphs. That depends upon the subject matter you are going to write down. That depends upon the time limit you are presented here. <coughs> That's why introduction. What do you, what do, you uh, do in introduction part? You are studying the thesis. Body paragraph, you are support for thesis. Another body, you can support for thesis. Body, how many bodies? There may be a series of the bodies and all the bodies what there is the deployment or elaboration of the test statement. And it is conclusion. Your concluding paragraph is the restatement of the thesis. This is the modality of your essay, okay? Uh, suppose your essay is of four paragraphs. Four paragraphs, your introduction, statement of thesis, body paragraph, or, uh, support for thesis, body two, support for thesis, and here is conclusion, restatement of thesis. If your essay is a four paragraph, if your essay is a five paragraph, introduction, body, another body, another body, and here is conclusion. Are you clear about this? The modality? Yes, sir. Okay. And how to develop thesis? Do you have a time? Oh, this is the last section of unit uh, chapter two. Okay. We, it doesn't take much time. Can I finish within 10 minutes? So yes, that we can start uh, chapter 3 tomorrow. Yes. Can I start or not? Yeah, you can start, sir. Okay. Uh, how to develop thesis? We understood the thesis previously in introduction and body and conclusion. Now it is the time we are developing a thesis. How can we develop the thesis? Before developing thesis, you should first define the thesis statement. Then what? After defining, deciding on the thesis, then studying the thesis and finally implying the thesis. And um, this will be the end of today's class. Okay, defining a thesis statement. What is the thesis statement? Or thesis statement tells the reader how he will interpret the significance of the subject matter under discussion. This uh, it is a road map for the paper. In other words, it tells the reader what to expect from the rest of the paper. Okay, here is a very standard definition of thesis statement. In the thesis statement that tells the reader how he will interpret the significance of the subject matter under discussion okay whether the subject matter he has selected is significant or not this can be judged in the quote of thesis that's why it is a road map for the paper it tells the reader what to expect from the rest of the paper that's why it makes the uh, whole assignment very inter or interesting interesting for the readers whether, whether to read the whole text or not, whether it is significant or not, whether the writer has selected the significant uh, topic or not. Okay, the thesis statement focuses the writer's idea into one or two sentences. Thesis statement can be presented in one sentence or two sentences. It should present the topic of this of his paper the thesis statement should tell his reader should tell his reader what the paper is about and also help guide his writing and keep each argument focused okay the thesis statement what uh, focuses the writer's idea into one or two sentences it should present the topic of the paper okay what should be presented there? The thesis statement should present topic or topic should be presented in thesis statement. And this thesis statement should tell the readers what the paper is about. 
what is the paper about and it helps the reader guiding the writer and the argument or whatever the writer has presented that is focused here in the thesis statement that's why uh, thesis statement can be understood as the road map of the whole text or whole paper uh, here are sample of thesis statement if it is not clearly visible uh, you can uh, read yourself and here is one speaking out suppose uh, your your essay title is speaking out your assignment title is speaking out and your your intention is announced here the announcement of intent this essay will discuss a time when i could have spoken out but did not this is the intention this essay suppose this is the modality this essay will discuss a time when i could have spoken out or did not and here is a statement of fact once i was uh, i saw someone cheating and did not speak out and the thesis statement for this project is as i look back at the cheating i witnessed i wonder why i kept silent and what would have happened if i had acted this is the thesis statement support or associated to your speaking out all the time this is about speaking out here is spoken out and here for speaking out and here is for keeping silent for the writer is presenting the argument against keeping silent this is this statement and here is what title hybrid card pros and cons announcement of intent i will examine the pros and cons of these hybrid cars that use both gasoline and electricity and statement of fact hybrid cars are more energy efficient than cars with standard gasoline what engines and here is the thesis statement hybrid cars that use both gasoline and electricity would decrease our country's water depends on foreign oil okay that is thesis statement for this project and another example from george orwells or hanging okay this paper will discuss george orwells attitude towards the death penalty in his essay or uh, or hanging and statement of fact that is in this in his essay orwell describes the hanging out he witnessed in burma and the thesis statement for this whole project is that in hanging george orwell shows that capital punishment is not only brutal but also immortal these are the ways of writing thesis statement and these are some samples i have presented to you and i have cited from somewhere else from book your book okay and now deciding on the thesis the decision made while formulating the thesis uh, statement depends on how you are going to decide the thesis your thesis can be decided on uh, your three subject matter the scope of the assignment how uh, how effective uh, what is its area what is its significance on the basis of that the thesis can be decided and the gained knowledge of the researcher on the subject uh, if you have uh, a lot of knowledge about uh, this subject matter you can develop the thesis related to your knowledge uh, another method of writing on the basis of method of writing okay you can develop you can decide what sort of thesis you are going to develop later on uh, the writer can easily come up with the thesis statement provided that the subject matter is obvious to him okay if the subject matter is clear to uh, the writer he can easily develop the thesis if the subject matter is not clear to him then he has to brainstorm he has to cluster he has to outline okay so many pre writing exercise he has to accomplish before he starts this statement he doesn't need any invention activities like brainstorming pre writing etc if the subject matter is very familiar to you sometimes one has to exercise hard to decide on the thesis if the thesis is peculiar to him uh, if the subject matter is very strange to the writer he has to exercise hard he has to involve in series of pre writing activities that's why deciding on thesis uh, that depends upon your knowledge that depends upon your scope of the assignment that depends upon your 
acknowledgement. If you are familiar with the subject matter, your thesis can be decided within short period of time, or you can easily decide your thesis. If the subject matter is not clear to you, you cannot decide your thesis statement easily. You have to involve in a series of pre-writing activities. Okay, that is uh, about deciding on your thesis. Now, studying the thesis. The effective thesis statement can be of uh, one sentence which has three characteristics. Effective thesis can have three characteristics. It clearly expresses the assessment idea. It communicates the purpose of the writer and it is clearly ordered. Discarding the chance of writing like that, my thesis goes like that or the thesis of this paper is about that. It is not necessary. Effective thesis doesn't I start from that. It clearly, it is clearly worded. The reader, the reader, what readers themselves understand what the writer is going to write down. Not necessary to write my thesis goes like that, or the thesis of this paper goes like that. Not necessary to write like this. That's why the thesis, effective thesis statement can be of own sentence. This should express the assessment idea. This should communicate the purpose of the writing and this is clearly what it is. And what it doesn't need any what it doesn't need any what starting like that. My thesis goes like that. The, the inexperienced writer write like that. But experienced writer doesn't write like this. Now implying the thesis you are towards the final part of thesis. You are applying the thesis. The professional writers prefer writing the implied thesis than explicitly stated thesis because the thesis of this sort doesn't tell the purpose outwardly. Uh, I would like to tell about uh, the difference between explicit thesis and implicit thesis. Uh, in one sentence, explicit thesis gives opportunity to the writer, sorry, to the reader to know the main point. Because the writer clearly states the thesis, clearly states the point. In explicit thesis, the writer clearly states the point. But in implicit thesis, the writer doesn't clearly state the main point. The readers have to understand what out of reading. That's why which one is experience, which one is professional writing? Telling the main point clearly or not telling the main point clearly? Which is experience right? Which is professional writing? Can you tell me? <clears throat> Telling the main point clearly. This is not professional writing. Telling the main point clearly, this is explicit thesis. Okay. And not telling the main point clearly, this is what implicit thesis. That's why the writer write implied thesis. Here, look at the term implied thesis, then explicitly stated this. Because the thesis of this shorter or short doesn't tell the purpose outward. That's why experienced writer do not tell the thesis outwardly because if we tell the thesis, if, the, if we tell the main point clearly or outwardly, the readers only read the thesis statement and they do not uh, show interest in reading the whole assignment. That's why the experienced or professional writer, they are recommended not to tell the main points outwardly. Okay. Are you clear about this? Okay, dear student, are you clear about this? Yes, sir. 